So I wanted to give a reaction to the governor's speech last night. Number, the number one thing was that it happened really early in the evening. So uh, we came, we started our uh, event here and a couple of things that happened. Um, somebody told me that as, as they're getting to the, to the uh, event uh, for our, for our um, watch party, said, well, the K KSL just said that there were a couple of people here with lawn chairs. So when I caught the KSL person, I said, is that what you said? Because the party, you were here 45 minutes earlier. Are you talking about 45 minutes early? And, and yeah, he was. So it was disparaging from the beginning. The uh, Salt Lake Trib was disparaging. Everything has been like a setup. This was like a staged event. And at 8 o'clock, the polls closed. At 8.23, the Associated Press called the, the, uh, the race in favor of Governor Cox. And immediately, the, the press started pressuring me for a concession. They wanted me to concede even though we were two minutes into the ball game, essentially. Um, and I told them I wasn't going to concede until the game was over, until we knew what the votes were, until we had verified the results, until we had verified the election. So, um, but that's, what's, that, that's what was happening at my uh, event, and this is what was happening at the governor's. So, and again, this has to be before 9 o'clock. So this is early, early in the evening. Uh, about 200,000 votes that had, that had come in out of an expected 440,000. I think that number has now gone up. We're probably pushing more close to 500,000 votes that are expected. Uh, but just the condescension of, of why we should have to concede at the very beginning. And this is so staged. Sadly, it's been a long few months. Really rough to run for office. You can see up in the corner there the number of votes. So this is the this is the narrative that's happened from the beginning. The made-up conspiracy theories, the lies. Uh, come on, people. You all know that I am a completely trustworthy person. Anyone that says otherwise is just off their rocker. Phil Lyman is, you know, represents the fringe, the populists. So we'll keep watching here. Thank you for helping us. We could not do this without any of you. Thank you, thank you, thank you. Get Matt, Matt, Matt Lusty. Campaign manager, come on up, Matt. <clears throat> no, look, this is all the governor. Look, I do actually just want to say one thing. This governor really went out to make this state better. He lifted people up. When people were saying, don't go endorse some of these other candidates, when people were saying, don't do some of these things, the governor in our meeting said, no, we're going to do what's right and what we think is right for the state, and we're seeing that tonight. So I just want to publicly acknowledge that to everyone here, and I just want to thank the thank governor you. for his courage on that. Thank you. And the lieutenant governor is here with us as well, so we appreciate that. We just want to give a chance for everybody to connect with the governor, and then we'll do uh, kind of a press scrum meeting over here behind the backdrop in just we a few minutes. Speech. Do you want to speak? Yeah, yeah. Let's go out here so that we've got go more space. And we can, we can chat out there for a minute. I have a speech. Creating your first video? You should start with the music. Go to artless.io and get high quality music and sound effects for any type of. <clears throat> so now you can see it's, it's early in the evening. I don't know what time that is. It might be, it might be closer to 8.30. I think it was immediately after the uh, Associated Press called the uh, election. And why would, the, why would the Associated Press call the election so early on? 23 minutes, 23 minutes. What will likely, what will likely end up being like a week-long uh, election to get all the votes in and 23 minutes in. Senator Weiler, of course, is there with his wife and chanting Deidre. years that he and I looked at each other and said, 
This might cost us the election next time, but we don't care. We're going to do it because it's the right thing to do. And I can't tell you how that helped me. So it's just such fake sincerity the on the governor's face. And know that we were making decisions, smug. And hard decisions because they were the right thing to do, even if they weren't maybe the popular thing to do. And I'm really grateful that the Republicans in the state of Utah have chosen to nominate us again, once again. Uh, and we'll see. It's the kind of election season thank and, me and very much the of the, the rest of the people of the state of Utah. attitude yeah, thank you <clears throat> well, to all of our supporters here tonight thank you so much for being here in the heat uh, now thank we you get the for speech showing up. thank you for knocking doors uh, thank you for putting signs up thank you for talking to your neighbors and, and your friends we have an incredible state we are so lucky to be able to serve in these positions over the past four years and uh, we're, we're really excited to, to get ready for November. Um, I, I just want to say a couple things and thank a couple people. Um, I, I have to thank my incredible wife, Abby, the first lady of this state. Uh, she, uh, she does more than most of you realize. Um, she has done so much good in this state, and I'm so grateful for her. I'm proud of her. I love her. Thankful for my children uh, who have put up with all of the nonsense and uh, have been with us through throughout all of this. Uh, these things are, are really hard on families, and uh, it doesn't work unless you have a tremendous amount of support at home, and we're both lucky to have that that incredible support. Um, He's right Dave about Henderson, that. The second gentleman who is takes a toll on families. thank my cabinet and senior staff look I sadly elections become about memes and uh, you know 280 characters on Twitter or X and and Facebook posts um, but the real work of governing happens every single day and we have I'm here to tell you guys we have the best cabinet and senior staff in the history of Utah and anywhere in the country right now these people have all given up better jobs higher pay to sacrifice and Utah is the best run state in the nation for a reason it's not because of me it's not because of the lieutenant governor it's because of these people who toil every day to do the hard things and, and get the get things done um look because of people in utah hard to do things families the right in utah way. we don't always get it right i'm the first to admit that uh but we believe that there is a better way to govern that the way that that our country is trending the polarization that is out there is not healthy the destruction of institutions destroying trust in our neighbors destroying not trust in our fellow americans destroying trust in the institutions that that have made us the greatest nation on earth and the greatest state in the nation is is not healthy for any of us so i'm, I'm proud that we rose above the fray so he's saying the biggest danger is destroying trust in the institutions, destroying trust in the government, undermining the confidence of the people should have in their government. Because we all know in, the, in, in America that we better trust the government. What could possibly go wrong with that? And we'll see more here. We, we did it the right way. We did it without attacking. We did it without negativity. They're, they're the positive ones. They're the ne they're, they didn't go negative. Notice in our logo up here, we have a heart in the middle of that state. Uh, look, I believe that, that you can, uh, let me put it this way, I reject the notion that to be strong you have to be mean. I re I, there is nothing conservative about tearing other people down. There is nothing conservative about destroying the institutions that make us a country. Someone who will get on and say, I would never tear other people down like my opponent does. I would never do these horrible things like my opponent does, is doing the worst, the worst sort of tearing people down. It's the worst sort of, uh, uh, you know, holding up somebody and to ridicule. And that's what he's doing. And he knows that's what he's doing. He knows he has the bully pulpit. but he knows the, he's the governor of the state. I don't have an executive staff. I don't have people. I don't have the 100,000 followers. I don't have what he's got. All I did was ask for some accountability in government. And I'm still asking for some accountability in government. The election is far from over. Yet you would think from this that uh, that I am a, just a, uh, a an irritant. There is nothing conservative about treating our fellow Americans with contempt. Um, I challenge the notion that we aren't the most conservative team in this race. We aren't the most populist team. 
Uh, that's, that's for sure. But we are the most conservative team in this race. And it's those conservative values now he'll, that has made Utah Now he'll go on to explain all of his conservative of plans for the state of Utah. We're proud to stand as the nominees of the Republican Party. We look forward uh, to, to Which a is clean race as we move towards November. We look really emphasizing here that the, that the Republican Party is not the convention. The Republican Party are the people who just voted in the Republican primary, even though 30% of them in Salt Lake County are Democrats. Forward to winning in November, and we look forward to four more years of prosperity to the number one state in the nation. Every governor thinks that. Every governor thinks that. But U.S. News and World Report proved it, that we are, once again, two years in a row, the number one state in the nation. <laughs> Such a show. Such a show. We the people won this race and we're proud of you. And with that, we're happy to take any questions. Governor, how much did the... Look at these KPIs. Our traffic is dropping. It doesn't work. The keywords are all wrong. My did those attacks from the right impact you as a campaign? Attacks from the right? Oh, clear. Those attacks don't come from the right. Populism is not the right. Populism is not conservatism. <laughs> and I wish the media would get this right. This is Somebody something struck different. a nerve. This is something different. But yes, uh, uh, that's not the right. Campaigning works or people wouldn't do it. Doesn't mean it's good. Um, it's, it's not good for your soul. It's not good for our country. It's, it's not good for our state. Um, and, and so, yeah, those things work. This is called negative campaigning, Governor. People believe those. This is what so you're doing. People work really hard. You're the best at it. work really hard to tell people the truth about who we are and what this state is about. And uh, we, we always believe that in the end, truth will win. And, uh, and we prove that again this time. Governor, what do you think about... As long as you don't look at the voter records or the signatures or... Look, I... Donald Trump is the nominee of, of the party um, nationally. He's going to win here in Utah. Um, again, I think the, our, our Republican Party is different in Utah. Um, many, many Republicans will vote for Trump, and that's okay because that's the nominee, right? But, but I think what we've shown is, again, we're different. Um, we do care about our neighbors still, and we should. We shouldn't put our political identities first. We are Utahns first. We are Utah Jazz fans first. We're now hockey fans. We're a whole bunch of other things before that. And, and I think it shows. And, and by the way, I think we're the last bastion of hope for the rest of the country when it comes to uh, a Republicanism that is, is inspiring that is forward thinking, that cares about solving problems and not... Now listen to this, because this is not the voice of a conservative. This is Gavin Newsom 2.0 right here. That's the difference. Hockey, That's the difference. baseball. The races that we ran, we are about solving problems. There were no proposals submitted. Um, our, our opponent has been in the legislature for six years. If there were, if, 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 if it, any of those things he said were true, he could have solved... And he's talking about me there, that I've been in the legislature for six years. And it's true, I'm one of 104 legislators, and I do the very best I can to get bills passed. And I pass some really important bills, uh, bills dealing with public lands and road access. My important bills dealing with uh, election integrity were attacked by the governor. I was said that I was playing a very dangerous game. He'll mention that again. Now my ideas are dangerous. Uh, checking elections are dangerous. Auditing the elections are dangerous. Uh, uh, you can tell when he talks about Donald Trump that there's a little bit of uh, Trump derangement syndrome going on there that he's got to speak through. And um, uh, none of this stuff is something that an individual legislator can go to Salt Lake, be in the legislature, and change everything that they want to change. They've got to influence people. And in this situation, you've got to influence right past the governor who is pushing against you. I wanted to repeal SB 54. I've worked to do that. The, the, the message coming across constantly was you'll never get it through the Senate. Well, why not? Because the Senate will, will, won't pass it because the governor doesn't want it. So, and then you get all of these bills that the governor himself and his staff have, have put together through the UEOC that come down from a top-down approach that they push through the legislature with all of the bully pulpit at their disposal, all of the threats to, to cut off funding, all of the threats to cut off um, passing, passing bills or vetoing bills. Uh, and then he says, and then he has the audacity to say, my opponent's been in the legislature for six years. If he wanted to, he could have fixed this. Give me a break. Six years, but he didn't. Um, we are about problem solving. <laughs> but he didn't. And our Republican Party in Utah is He had a chance to fix it, and he didn't. So how do you welcome his favorite? These are, those were attacks were different. So whatever problems are in Utah, it's not my fault. I'm just the governor. They weren't attacks from the right, they were something different. No, I, again, I, I, just, I just don't like this, this idea that, um, 
that that we're 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 calling people conservatives because please please stop calling my opponent conservative policies are conservative um we have a conservative philosophy this idea that um that that's the right you know versus moderate um just just doesn't ring true to me and i don't think it rings true to most utah i guess the question i asked what were they if they were if they weren't attached they're populists yeah governor how do you unite the party and unite your constituents moving forward yeah look again we represent the Republican Party, and we represent the entire state of Utah. They're um, populists. We have an opponent. I'm not sure what that means. These ideas, I, I believe, are very dangerous for our state. Uh, ideas that are dangerous. Ideas that would radically transform our state. Um, we are where we are because like getting rid of the tax on Social Security. That we've had in the past, like Governor Gary Herbert, who was here in whose footsteps. Like being energy Obama, independent. Uh, like pushing back on the federal government. Before him, we, we, we've putting the federal government in their lane, in, in our empowering state, counties. And, uh, and that's going empowering to parents and so there is a real choice on the ballot in november it, it, it's a real choice it's a it, it, it's a very um, different choice and and i know that republicans will respond to that what is your hope for the next four years if you do win in november what do you want to see you tell the flag in four years yeah so we, we have a lot of work left to do and it's continuing things we're working on we've mentioned the price of housing we know it's too high we passed several bills they're just going into effect now uh that are going to have an impact but that's that's a big one for us that that's a big one we're going to continue to work to uh, prepare for the olympics that are coming in 10 years the next four years are going to be crucial in the work that we're doing there prepare for the olympics we got we've got to get zero net uh, uh, emissions. We've got to in, in put DEI in full swing. We've got to embrace LGBTQ. We've got to do that all in the next 10 years because we're signing this compact to do the Olympics because we're the most conservative state because we want to be, you know, the Declaration of Independence and our children and our, uh, just on and on and on. Well, that is the, it's not conservatism. Governor? So um, it's, it's an exciting time to be a Utah. There's major plans to transform downtown Salt Lake City. Let's transform downtown Salt Lake City. Mayors of the city As a, County, obviously, that's what government's supposed to do. And, uh, and again, conserving Utah values, making sure that our kids and grandkids can live here. Let's give $300 million to my best friends who are developers. Let's give them that money. They're going to build grandkids from houses for These kids. And the laws that we're putting in place to hold social media accountable, those are important, and uh, we're going to follow those through. Governor, were you surprised at all by the margins that you expected the not, not at all surprised by the margins. That's about where we expected no. them to be. No, we're um, right I'm on. Sure they'll fluctuate a little bit, but they'll hold pretty close. Might be surprised when the results the actually come in. Uh, had yeah. his Could be. Just battled as opposed to facing a Democrat in November. Which one's harder for you? Uh, look, they're, they're both challenges, distinct challenges. Um, they're, they're, they're both important. I don't know that one's harder than the other. Mm. Uh, you know, obviously, a, a well-funded opponent um, who was, you know, who, who didn't care about the truth, those are... Those are a so I got to take some real uh, opposition to this idea that I'm a well-funded opponent who doesn't care about the truth. That's really all that I care about is the truth. Um, He's the one that's threatened by that. He's the one that's threatened by the truth. If not, let's take a look at the signatures. Let's just, let's just take a look at the signatures. Open up those packets. Let's go through. If you want to have somebody, a qualified independent third-party professional uh, that we agree upon, let's do that. Somebody that's independent. Um, and when they can go through and they can verify those things. No way. No way are you going to have that happen because I don't believe in the truth. Obviously, that's the case. Otherwise... I, I would just shut up and leave all of those things alone. I would just accept the elections. I would accept a, a declaration of a victory for the governor and after 23 minutes, and I would, I would give my concession speech. For sure, um, but uh, but we we know we have a, a formidable challenger on the Democratic side. I served in the legislature. We both served in the legislature with uh, with the Democratic nominee, and so it, it'll be a tough race. But again, we are a red state. We're we're a conservative state, and we're a conservative state for a reason. And we look forward to representing those values. You were attacked in this campaign about the governing better, the governing yeah. different. Yeah. What's your response to that when when that was kind of used as a talking point against you? Sure. Look, uh, yeah. If 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 you want to attack me for treating uh t treating people i disagree with with respect go ahead and attack me all day that's this is the governor treating people with respect this is how he treats people with respect give me the camera give me the lights and i will do everything i can to completely destroy somebody you know, that because that's, that's who i am I think that says more about you than it says about it says me. more about you than it does about me Maybe you just hate me because I don't hate enough. I that could be. That's, that's what we do. It's a, it's a, it's a competition.
exchanging of ideas. And if the people of Utah, if the Republicans wanted someone else, ridiculous. I'm perfectly fine with that. I have no problem with Painful that. to watch. There's a way to do that with dignity and respect. And, uh, and sadly, we didn't see much of that, but uh, <laughs> we see that from us moving Do you think that, that idea is the Not much dignity and respect, but, but going forward, that's what you're going to see from us is dignity and respect. Not, not during this press conference. In a place that we are in governing, uh, you are kind of in the forefront of something, something different. I, you know, I'm not in the forefront of it. This is who Utah is. This is who we've always been. People say it's in our DNA. But, um, but I, I want to be clear. This is this is who we are, but it is not in our DNA. We are going to have to fight because the rest of the country decided that we're not going to do this anymore, that we're going to hate each other, that we're going to tear each other apart. And in Utah, we're the anchor. We're the last best hope of this nation to say that's not who we are. We are better than that. So Settle I'm down. Settle down. I'm not at the forefront. I am following generations of leaders from Utah who have always done it this way. It just feels like we're all at the forefront because the rest of the country and our party moved away from us. And so now Utah finds ourselves at the front. We didn't ask for this. This isn't what we wanted to do, but somebody has to do it. Somebody has to stand up and tell our nation that there is something better. We don't have to do this anymore. Um, we can fight about it. Can't we all just get along? We can, we can, uh, you know, we can, we can have elections. We can have a battle of ideas. But at the end of the day, we have to respect the results of those elections, and uh, and then we have to work to make our country better, no matter who wins. And that's what we're going to do. This is why I stopped shopping on Amazon, and you should too. Don't spend another dime on Amazon. Last question. Tomorrow morning, you got to get up. Last question. Tomorrow morning, you got to get up. You got to do it all again. Yeah. What do you say to yourself? What does Abby say to you to get you to roll out and do this all over again? You know, um, there's a moment in every race where we look at each other, we look at each other, and uh, you ask yourself, why do we do this? <laughs> when, uh, you know, when, when you see the oh. 30th attack that day, <clears throat> making up something, calling, Here we go. crushing your integrity with, with no evidence, nothing, um, you start to wonder, is it... Don't is take it personal, thing? Governor. We both had better... Just want to see the signatures. Um, there are so many other things... Just want some election like, integrity. And, and then you roll out of bed mm. and you go to a uh. school and, and you see these amazing teachers and these kids. Um, you, you see, um, you know, the, the, the Special Olympics kids that Abby works with. Uh, you, you see the people of Utah yeah. just doing good yeah. every day. And, and then you realize dig deeper, dig we deeper. Are the luckiest per people uh, on earth. We're the luckiest people in this state. Th that burden just lifts; it goes away. Natural, and, and I, like, natural at manipulating people, gaslighting uh, people. We, we don't take it for granted at all. Um, we pinch ourselves every day and think, "I can't believe we're here." Um, uh, it, it doesn't make any sense. If you look at our backgrounds, uh, if you look at where we grew up, how we grew up, if you look at the challenges that our families had when we were younger, like they don't let kids like us do stuff like this. And, <clears throat> and yet we're here and we get to do this. Kids like us. We're no different than anybody else out there. And, and that's what's amazing about this I was a kid country once. that we call home. Um, this this land of liberty. It's time uh, to grow up, Governor. The Declaration of Independence that, that, that says that we have these unalienable rights of life, liberty, and the pursuit of happiness. And, and so here's the thing that really bugs me about this this whole speech is uh, it's it's a performance. It's an absolute performance. And you watch the you watch the motions and the, the intonations. And and here's a guy that is that is still running for governor. If if you're told just now that that you, that you won the election, and you actually believe it. It would be a time to disagree better. It'd be a time for concession. It'd be a time to, to step out. But this is not what he's talking about. This is like, now I will destroy anybody who disagrees with me. Now, the funny thing is, uh, when they called this, it was about 60% 60, 60 Cox, 40% me. And now he's down to about 56%. That's as of midnight last night. Uh, 50, 56% and, and dropping. Uh, our people turn out at the last. Uh, it would be really interesting to find out what his speech looks like if those actually tipped, if those tables tipped. Now the media will tell you that's impossible. Statistically, oh, this, this is not gonna tip. Well, it is, it is slowly inching towards, towards this. And in uh, Utah County, we've got 16% turnout. 
um, everybody looks at that and says, that seems, that seems infeasible, that would have 16% turnout. The number of votes are dramatically less than they were in 2022, even though the population is higher. 2022 was not a governor year, it wasn't a presidential year. Um, and, um, and here we are in this, in this primary, uh, <clears throat> I think it's an important race, a lot of important races. House seats, uh, uh, nationally, senator seat, um, so the idea that the Utah County just didn't show up, well, maybe they showed up on the last day. Maybe they showed up because the Utah County uh, clerk said, we're going to have the fast pass elect, uh, voting on, on election day. Um, and maybe, they, maybe there's a lot of ballots that were cast yesterday that still need to be counted. Maybe they're not below the average. Maybe they're not the lowest in the state. Maybe they're back up among the highest in the state. You know, in Sandy, they had a power outage yesterday from 4 o'clock till 8.30. Power went out. If you wanted to vote, you had to go find a different place. Um, this is the time when the conservatives say, I don't trust the election system. I'm going to vote in person on election day. And uh, whether that's contrived, whether it's manufactured or not, there was a power, a power outage. Um, where I come from, we probably have the least reliable power grid uh, in the state. And we don't have power outages at uh, uh, at important times like that. And if we do, we would get the power turned back on within 10 or 15 minutes. Um, what we're seeing here is, uh, is, is just another, another smoke screen. I've told people before, the only thing we know for sure in Utah is that we're being lied to. Um, and if you watch the governor's um, body language here, that's the only thing you know about him is that he is putting, that this is a performance. Oops. I'll jump towards the end here. To be here. God bless you all. Thank you for being here tonight. Yeah. Now there's a couple of questions that he gets asked here that I wanna I wanna refer to. Because he's talking again about me, he's talking about my family. Is Lyman gonna concede? Um again, that says more about him than us. Uh, and that's yeah. Yeah. Again, we're destroying institutions. Um, we're destroying institutions. Uh, uh, it, you know, we're 10 minutes into the election. Uh, if, if he doesn't concede, that says more about him than it does us. Uh, we're, we're, or obviously, we're the, bigger, we're the bigger people. He's a small, petty individual who won't concede a race, even though nobody should concede a race. Why would you admit, why would you concede the game when you're barely halfway through the first quarter? But the, this is, and, and he, then he'll go on and talk about uh, Phil Lyman a little bit. Courtesies, there's, there's a normalcy to this. Conceding doesn't mean the votes don't count. That's, that's not a thing. Uh, you know, I can tell you if we had lost by five points, I would have called and, um, and congratulated him. Um, that's, that's how we roll. That's how we do things. Uh, you know, you would have done that. You would have done that in the first half hour, governor. If you were down by five points, you would have picked up the phone, called me and said, Hey, congratulations. I drop out. You win. I, before the debate, um, had a great conversation with him. With him. I, I wished him well in the debate. I asked him how he was feeling. I, I told him to breathe uh, because debates are hard, and I knew he hadn't done one before. Uh, the night he went to jail, I called him. This, okay, this was not a this was not a a moment of him consoling me before a debate because I was nervous. If you go watch the debate, go and see who you think was nervous during the debate. Um, I was there to talk about issues. Um, and I greeted the governor, and I shook his hand, and I wished him good luck, and I thanked him for doing the debate. So now he's, now he's talking about um, calling my wife. If we cried on the phone with each other for a half hour. Uh, I, I went to a fundraiser uh, when he was going to... So he, he says uh, he, he called my wife when I was in jail. Uh, rather than standing up for the road, which, which he could have done as the lieutenant governor, um, so he, he, he cried on the phone with my wife for a half hour. Uh, he left her a message. It was a minute and 15 seconds. It was very appreciated. It meant a lot to her. It's meant a lot to our family up until this statement. Um, and, and, and it means a lot less now that we're seeing that it gets thrown back in our face as, you know, uh, first of all, a complete fabrication of what actually happened. You know, it was, it's, it was an honor for my wife to receive a call from the lieutenant governor saying, hey, um, hope you're doing all right. Hope everything's going okay. Uh, I know we didn't stand up for your husband. I know we didn't stand up for the road. I know we offered to pay $2,000 and then didn't do that. I know I said that the governor was gonna give $10,000 and then the governor said he, he wasn't going to do that. 
You know, they offered, uh, he, he said, I'm giving $2,000, the governor's giving uh, $10,000. Not too long after that, I get a call from the Division of Corporations uh, saying that I was illegally soliciting donations. I said, I'm not soliciting any donations. Uh, they said, well, what about the governor's money? I said, I didn't solicit that. Well, are you saying you don't want it? I said, no, I've, I've got bills. I said, donate it to the, to the Freedom Festival in Cedar City. Uh, do, do something with it. No, this, this, this money is important. We don't, have, we don't have cash to just throw around, so make a donation to the Freedom Festival. Um, no, we're not giving it to anybody. We're only giving it to you. And if we give it to you, then we're going to prosecute you for soliciting a donation. Do you want it or do you not want it? And I said, you know, if that's, if that's, if that's the conditions, tell the governor thank you. Tell him thanks for the gesture, and that's good enough. He can keep his money. And she said, if that's the case, all, of this, all these problems go away right now. This is on the phone with me as a county commissioner being uh, uh, extorted. It's called extortion when uh, an agency, a state agency, calls and says, would you like to be prosecuted or would you like the governor to fulfill his obligation to send you $10,000 and the lieutenant governor to send you his $2,000? Now, if, if the governor uh, is saying that he bought a Navajo taco that night and that was his contribution, uh, you know, thank you, governor. I appreciate you showing up in Blanding, buying the Navajo taco. I appreciate all of it. But when you throw it back in my face like this, with, wrapped up in a lie to, to disparage me, to disparage my family, um, I got to call you out on that. I got to call you right out on that, Spencer. Don't do that. We don't do those types of things. That's not disagreeing better. It's petty. It's fake. To help him uh, with, uh, to pay his fine. Um, you know, I, look, uh, <laughs> there's, there's decency and then there's um, what, whatever this is. And so. Okay, so he's saying there's decent, decency and then there's whatever this is. I hope he's talking about himself there because whatever this is is not decency. It's the opposite of decency. It's the opposite of, uh, of, of um, leadership and of grace or, uh, anyway, it's, it's, Pathetic is what it is. This is pathetic. Watching, a, watching an individual take that moment in my life when I'm in jail and he's calling my wife, now he comes back here and he's throwing that back in my face. And, and the ironic thing about all of that was that the, uh, uh, all that would have had to happen uh, would be for the state to simply say, yeah, that's, that's a road. That's a county road. They send down the individuals. Uh, I don't think they could uh, pass up the chance to try to bury me and bury my family, and he's still trying to do it um, unsuccessfully, I might add. Uh, such a little weasel. Um, you know, I, I don't care if he concedes or not, it doesn't, it doesn't do anything to us or to me. <laughs> that's, that's totally up to him. Does he consider you a friend? I, I hope so, but uh, you know, it, I, I, I certainly don't treat my friends the way that, that he's treated us. So, thanks guys. Uh, <clears throat> all right, it's painful to watch. It's painful to watch, uh, not because it brings up any past trauma for me, but because this is the person who is about to become the governor of the state of Utah for the next four years. And uh, it's, a, it's a fake. It's a fraud. It's phony. Um, let's, let's just take a look at these things. Um, I'm, I'm anxious to see the rest of the result, results come in on the election um, and see where, see where things stand. Uh, if it gets really close, will will the governor un you know take back his victory speech and say, well, let's wait and see? Will he say maybe we should take a look at the results? Maybe we should have an independent uh, firm take a look at the at these results. Maybe we should go down by precinct. Maybe we should give the data, just the numbers, to Representative Lyman that he's asked for for four years now, so that he could do a, a statistical analysis. Or maybe we could hire that independent auditor to come in for two hours and sit down with our election clerks to, to do a statistical analysis so that he could go back and say, yeah, Phil, I looked at that. It really does seem like everything's okay. No way is that going to happen. No way are they going to do that. Uh, so here we are. Here we are the day after the uh, election, waiting for results to come in. We'll probably be waiting for uh, a few more days now before we really know. Um, and, uh, and there's a lot of uh, pressure um, put on these guys to continue the narrative. A lot of pressure on the press to make sure that they are not proven wrong on this. Um, they're not unbiased. This is not an unbiased election, um, and it should be. Utah deserves it. Anyway, thanks.